Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I am Adrian Fork. And I'm Dalton Gentry. What are we here with, Dalton? We're here for a book haul. Book haul. People like book hauls. I like book hauls. Good. I went to the used bookstore. Good. And Good I, for you. All my book hauls are based on budget. Like, you usually have, like, this is Adrian's philosophical book haul. This is... Because that's all I buy. Uh, mine are all based on budgets. So, backstory. Store in hometown, St. Joe. Used books, most from the library. You know, the library gets rid of their books. They sell those. 99% out of the time, it's 25 cents for a paperback, 50 cents for a hardback. Okay. Sometimes it's 50 cents for paperback, dollar for hardback. This whole haul was like six bucks and some change. Nice. So, a lot here. A lot yes. of quality, I think. I'm excited for it. All right. So, we're digging in. Number First one. up, Number Uno. Red Badge of Courage, Stephen Crane. Okay. Is that worth 25 cents? That's worth 25 you cents. You bet your ass that's worth well, 25 cents. Let me see cents. that. It is old enough that it was published for 60 cents. That's even <laughs> better. Uh, have you read this one? I have God, not. Damn it. Why do I always get property of District of St. Joe, like the school districts? Because you're a curmudgeon who buys things that old teachers pres- or this is not assignment. an old teacher. This is a student who had this like in his backpack and went home. He's like, I'm not taking it back. Okay. And 30 years later, he's like, Why do I still have this? Why did he have it in his backpack? Because the old teacher that no one likes made him read it. We should send in this, uh, <laughs> this free Bantam book catalog. Yes, and see if they send it to us. Yeah, we should. Uh, but no, I've never read it. I've heard a lot of good things from the Red Badge of Courage. Uh, I, I don't have anything bad to Nothing say about to it. No. Uh, you have this was published in 1964. So if we send that in, I hope they respond with "get lost." <laughs> you know, one guy's gonna get really excited because, like, they still remember. <laughs> it is Stephen Crane. Just <laughs> uh, I, I'm not. I'm tempted to not pick this one up right now because I'm. I told myself before we started filming. Do I need to close my eyes? No. Do I need to? Ear no. Mind? Okay. I told myself, I'm like, make sure you read the title of this one again so you don't screw it up. Lysistrata Aristophanes. Lysistrata and Aristophanes. Yes. Greek. Why Greek. not? Greek. Uh, a modern translation by Douglas Parker. If we don't mention that, we will get chastised. Crucified. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I wanted it. It's a play. It's a classic <laughs> play. I don't know anything about this. I don't. Virginia. Not a fucking thing. Okay. Uh, it it was a quarter, and I'm like, okay, I'm taking it home with me. Good. Thoughts? Good for you. Um, I I have no experience with this. I have no thoughts on this. We should. We've uh, a lot of people talk to us about reading the Audi, uh, the Odyssey, and the Iliad. Yes. Um. Maybe, but maybe I need something to wean me into this. I don't. I don't read a lot of classic Greek. We. S- did you were you in my world literature class? Maybe. With uh Yes, I was. We saw this. We watched this. Did we watch this? We watched this on a it was a movie from the 70s. Okay. Yeah. So yes, okay. I do have experience with this. You are not going to make it through. This is true. Moving on. Uh Maya Angelou, I know why the cage bird sings. Nice. For a quarter. Good. I told you this hall is going to just blow your fucking mind. Blow my fucking mind. Blow my fucking mind. Go ahead. Have you read this one? I have not. Uh, but we've used some quotes from Maya Angelou before. Yes. Uh, back when we were doing Writer's Quotes of the Weeks. Uh, nothing wrong with Maya Angelou. A little ashamed that I haven't read this already. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, I'm excited for this one. And this is huge. Yeah. In a lot of communities. Yeah. A lot of communities. It's an important book. So, I there's, I'm, yeah. Yeah. It is big in the literary community. Like yes, I don't, so I don't know why. Yeah, I mean literary any, community. Uh, anywhere where books are big, this is big. Yeah, unfortunately, we're assholes who have not yet read it. That's the way. We, and we've gotten a lot of flack lately for not reading a lot of women's women authors. We put J.K. Rowling on the channel weekly. Okay, I don't. That is not an excuse, but that is a woman being read every week. We put Emily Dickinson on the channel as often as I can. Convince Dalton to read her. What? I'm just telling you what the comments say. Oh, no, I get them, too. Uh, yeah. So, so, maybe Maya Angelou someday? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Here's, I'm not making an argument here. Okay. 
I'm just stating, books are a big place. Yes. We will get around to everything that we want to get around to eventually. Hopefully. Unless I die next week. <laughs> right? So, I mean, it's, it's just... like It would be just as sexist for us to say, okay, I'm going to read this now because it's written by a woman. Yes. As it would be to say, eyes closed, these are all the books we want, what do we want to read next month? Yes. Okay. Right? Uh, and that's that's the way we've been doing this. Yes. Because it's it's... On this, it's a balance, right? What do we think... What is popular? What do people want to see? What do we want to read? What would we... Like Fight Club, we brought because we wanted to expose the community to it. Uh, How many people came to us after Fight Club and said, I read this because of you? Yes. We did Slaughterhouse-Five because I really wanted to read Slaughterhouse-Five. Yes. Uh, we're doing American Psycho soon. Yes. Because you really wanted to do American Psycho. Yes. So, our bad? Yeah. Move on. Bartleby. And Benito Serino. Okay. Uh, Herman Melville. Bartleby the Scribner. Yes. Uh, which we were supposed to read, and I didn't. That, I, okay. Roberts, I, assign this. So did Donna her. Uh, so I'm actually 99% sure this probably yeah. came from that class. I think the, these are different things. Are they not? Bartleby and Bartleby the... Are they? I'm not sure. Keep going. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I know at one point we were assigned Bartleby the Scribner. Correct? Yes. Uh, I, are they different things? Am I speaking out of my ass? I thought so. I thought Bartleby the Scribner was not by Melville, but was by... Uh... It doesn't sound like it was by Melville. But this looks like that... Will you tell me, Bartleby, where you were born? I would prefer not to. It's got to be the same thing. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, that... We just sound like idiots <laughs> right now, but that's fine. <laughs> that was introduced very early in our literary career, though. Yeah. That was maybe our sophomore year together that we were first introduced to that. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, figured I needed it. Why did I think that was by someone else? I don't know, but I've got one for you. Okay. I hope you're proud of me Good. for this one. You need to give me things. Give me something pretty. Early Poems by Ezra Pound. <laughs> oh, yes! You're welcome. For oh, a are you buying that for me? Did you buy that for me? Or no, this you... is for me. Piss okay. off. This okay. is mine. Well, uh, the, the, way you fra <laughs> the way you framed that, I did not know. Okay, usually when I bring in a book haul, I'm like, Look, Julia Child, Adrian, I'm so excited for this. And you throw it. And you tell me it's bad. I can't have it. Yeah. Ezra Pound. Ez e Ezra Pound is... Have you ever read Ezra Pound? No. Okay. Uh, I don't think you're going to like what you're getting yourself into. Okay. Okay. But uh, who is Ezra Pound? Backstory. Go on. You, you, you're asking the questions. Uh, from what I understand, he is the man who basically taught Hemingway how to write, correct? Yes. Uh, he is also the guy who defected to Italy during World War II okay. and was a mouthpiece for Mussolini. Uh, Interesting man. Was a fascist. Came back and was basically locked in a cage because he worked for Mussolini. Okay. Right. Um, his largest, most well-known work, The Cantos, begins with the word and. But you like Ezra Pound. I like the idea of Ezra Pound. Okay. I think that Ezra Pound is incredibly interesting, is important to know, it is important to know the things, to to dissect the things that he thought about literature. Outside of literature, the guy, the guy was an asshole. The guy um, was very Adrianic in his education. Okay. In that he would do things in class just to fuck with professors. Fair enough. Um would tell professors in the middle of class that they were wrong, that they should shut up, things like that. So that is that is my attraction to the sphere that is Ezra Pound in okay. the literary world. Uh, but he was also extremely racist. He was also, like I say, a fascist. He was also, to some extent, a classist. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think there's other things at play there, but... I will not ever fall into the realm of hero worship with Ezra Pound like I did, uh, with, for example, with, with Hemingway. With Hemingway. Okay. Um, I know you spoke about him quite a bit, and, you know, when you say this is the man who taught Hemingway how to write, that obviously gives him some credit. I, and I, I want to give it a shot. See and what's he in there. Taught, he, he taught Pound how to box, I think? I think that's the classic idea, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh as much as I figured you'd appreciate that one, I got a Confederacy of Dunces. 
Uh, as much as I figured you wouldn't appreciate this one. Uh, this is one that you did not finish and you hate, correct? Yeah. And uh, was suggested to you uh, by a very dear friend and you can't stand it. No. I, I, I tried and I see what's going on there, but it's like... Um, it's like red velvet cake. It's okay. delicious. It's too much. No. It's just too much. Uh, but anyway, I saw that. I'm like, uh, for a quarter, I'm taking it. Yeah. So. I mean, you might as well. Yeah. It's definitely worth having. Might as well. Uh, as you continue to flip through that. Uh, Thomas Hardy. Hardy's selected poems. Now, I'm pretty sure I have most of these already anthologized at one. <laughs> Do you recognize that name? No. Uh, we went to class with the owner, the former owner of this novel. Of this book. Really? Yes. I do not remember that person. Okay, I will tell you a fun story afterwards when we're <laughs> not on camera. Uh, oh, we're with rough. notes. Notes. These come with notes. Uh, but anyway, I like Thomas Hardy. Uh, Neutral Tones is one of my favorite poems. I did a quick poetry review yes. on Neutral Tones. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely gravitated towards some Thomas Hardy poems. Needed to take that one home with me. No, we're trying to see if this has his most famous poem in it, but I don't see it. Okay. Well, it is the small Dover Thrift. Well, yeah, but I mean, this would this is one that would be in here, I would imagine. Uh, I'm going to pander... Does say early poems? I think yes. it was an early poem. I'm going to pander to Adrian a little more. It was right after he returned from Japan. The words of Abraham Lincoln. I'm pandering this week. I'm trying to make up for lost time. Don't you have this back here somewhere? No. I thought you did for some reason. I have Lincoln's Melancholy. Yes. And I know you're a Lincoln fan. Yeah. I mean, uh, who's not? So, why not? Uh, we don't do a lot of nonfiction. We don't. That would be a great place to expand into for quickies. Yes. So, we will see what old Abraham Lincoln has to say. This is his speeches, letters, proclamations, and papers. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah. You're not going to make it through that. Nope. <laughs> But eventually, I will end up just giving this to you because you're going to say, Hey, do you still have that Lincoln book? And I will forget about it. Yes. So, that's good for you. Why don't you take me to St. Joe and take me to this store sometime? Am I no longer your baby? It's my special store. You can right. have it. And they call me a monster because that's what you do. Crime and punishment. Ooh. And in it's a, a nice bag. copy, right? In a hardback. Look at that. And That'll look good on your bookcase. It had a little chip on it. Little chip. It was still 50 cents. Adds character. Adds character. 50 cents. Uh, this is pushing towards our We Should Read More Russian. This is the revised translation by Princess Alexandra Kropotkin. I hope I'm saying that roughly right. I sure hope so, too, or we're going to hear about it. Oh, yes, we are. Uh, have you read Crime and Punishment? No. Uh, me either. But goddamn if that isn't just a gorgeous copy. Here is a sample from Ezra Pound's poetry. Is that... Who collected it? Why does it say a different person's name right there? No idea. Okay. Fragment. You know very well where it was that I walked when you had left me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, Ezra Pound went to Japan for a little while, was very into haiku. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to make a rant video at some point with the person who I'm pretty sure Ezra Pound stole his whole niss from. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he was very interested in how much can you pack into this little droplet of, of writing. Okay. I have one more book. Okay. On my super awesome budget book haul. All right. This is timely. This timely. is pertinent. Pertinent. Kurt Vonnegut, A Man Without a Country. You don't have that? Nope. When we read it, I got it from the library. Wow. Now I do. It now didn't have the dust jacket, It's probably the same copy. It more than likely... <laughs> actually, it really could be. Could That's be. terrifying. Uh, no dust jacket, but it is Kurt Vonnegut, A Man Without a Country. One of the finest and most, uh, well... Goddamn if Kurt Vonnegut isn't the best fucking author I've ever read. Just keep going, Dalton. For many of some reasons, and isn't... Most of booktube were just enamored with Kurt Oh, Vonnegut. yeah. I mean, I don't know any booktubers worth watching that don't sing his praises. And, I mean, honestly, don't most people in the literary community praise Vonnegut? Most thinking people do, and those tend to overlap. Hmm. So, I got me a little Vonnegut. Good. For 50 Cent. Good. And that's a pretty damn good book haul, I think, right? That's a good book haul. That's a good book haul. I'm glad you think so. That is a, that uh, is a wealth builder. In the literary department, Absolutely. 
And the kick-ass thing about this, like I said, $6 and some change. In addition, this was me spending 10 minutes in the store. So it's just full of this stuff. Yes. This is what the library is getting rid of to make room, and it flows into here. And here's what kills me about it. It's wall-to-wall books. And then you go to the register, and you see the back door, and it's just like a warehouse of just what they haven't put out yet. And everything's a quarter to a dollar. Sometimes it's 50 cents for paperback, dollar for hardback. Most of the times everything's on sale, it's 25 cent paperback, 50 cent hardback. Stay tuned to our channel, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Dalton home with a 10 spot. And he's going to come back with a 4 Adrian book haul. You know I'm going to specifically come back with 10, like, bag dollar books. You're going to get, like, 10 bags of 5 Daniel Steele books. If you would like to remain on strip cover lit, <laughs> I highly suggest you do not do that. Okay. I'm proud of this book haul. Yeah, uh, this I, I think it went well. Uh, if you like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a like as well to assure me that I did well. Adrian? Tell him he's an idiot in the comments. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit.